September 14th, 2018. Well, I've had a couple of people asking me about tomato hornworms lately. Um, I just came across one out here, so I uh, thought I would uh, share one, mostly for identification purposes. And those are eggs that he's covered in. Um, I believe those are tomato hornworm eggs, but uh, there's another, there's like a parasitic, I think it's like the hummingbird moth or something like that, that lays eggs on some type of caterpillar. It might actually be the tomato hornworm, and then uh, those eggs hatch out from it. Uh, <laughs> I'll look it up and get some real information for you, and uh, I'll put a link in the description below, as well as uh, more information about the tomato hornworm. Uh, this mostly is just... Uh, so people can identify them. They are one ugly monster. As Arnold Schwarzenegger would say. <laughs> Bad impression. Anyway, uh, so these are tomato hornworms. Uh, they will not bite you. They cannot sting with that horn looking thing. <coughs> um, so you can just pick them up with your fingers, and uh, what I usually do is just drop them on the ground and stomp them, and I spin my foot so that you crush all the eggs as well when I do it. And uh, it's also a quick, ethical, fast way to get rid of a pest. Um, I've had a few of these on and off in here, not too many. Um, I'm not sure how how they respond on that plant health pyramid, uh, whether you got to be up at the very top of the triangle or even if that will defend against them, I'm, I'm not really sure. I will try and get some information maybe from Advancing Eco Agriculture about it. I'll, uh, I'll send an email to John or Nathan. Um, but, uh, oh, and here is some of the damage that they do. Sorry, I'm kind of rambling. It's been a long day. Um, so this is what leaves will look like after they've chewed on them. So those leaves will stand out if you're looking closely at your plants. Obviously in a heavy canopy like this, sometimes they're hard to spot. Um, but I've gotten so my eye is kind of trained to them. So when my eye sees them, they, they stand right out to me, having found them before. And here's one here. <laughs> he, he said as he proved himself wrong. So there's one without eggs all over it. And this one you can see that horn much more distinctly. I think that's a pretty clean focus there for you. And you can see their spots and their stripes. Oh, and maybe those are eggs there. Not sure. It might just be his mouth. Uh, anyway, so usually where you have one, you'll have two or three. Uh, I've seen I don't know, up to maybe eight or ten on a plant before ever in my life. I've never seen more than that. I'm sure it happens. Um, but uh, they're not too much of a problem. You just stomp them. Uh, I've tried feeding them to my chickens, but my chickens are uh, uh, either freaked out by the size of them or, or something, but they don't seem interested. Uh, interesting, it looks like I've never had one chew on a tomato. But it looks like that's what's happening here. Interesting. I don't know, unless maybe a mouse or a mole climbed all the way up here, but I wouldn't think, and it's awfully close to where these other branches are chewed off. Um, hmm, maybe he did chew on the tomato itself. Interesting. Anyway, uh, so you're looking for leaf damage like this uh, as an indicator and they're usually like you saw right within that area on the plant and they usually don't go very far and they usually pretty much clean up each stem as they go all the leaves off each stem that seems to be their main uh, mode of operation so to speak uh, anyway I just want to share them with my viewers and oh 
there's another. Looks like we got a few out here today. I haven't been out here, by the way, in probably a week or so. Um, just it's rained the last four or five days this week, pretty heavily on and off, and so I haven't done any real uh, plant maintenance out here. So uh, I'm going through and picking off all the uh, ripe crimson beefsteak tomatoes. Just really love these. Their flavor is so awesome. And uh, yeah, they're delicious. You should try some. <laughs> um, I, don't know, I guess that's it, unless I find uh, more tomato hornworms. Oh, sorry, I'm a bit scattered tonight, people, but, uh, you know, just wanted to help you identify the tomato hornworm and uh, show a little bit of the damage they do and show you how I get rid of them. Uh, they're real simple. No need for pesticides. They're usually not in great numbers. As you saw, I've picked three off of here. This is a 90-foot row of tomato plants with a very dense canopy, and I think that's probably the 8th or 10th, yeah, probably the 8th maybe the seventh that I've taken off all total this season off of here. So that's not bad. Um, so that's a real easy one to manage. <coughs> um, I think that's pretty much it. Oh, uh, uh, you see the damage there. And here's another one. Make sure you're wearing shoes when you do that. <laughs> See if I spot any others here. So that was probably the eighth one all season uh, thus far. Um, I should mention one other thing. Uh, I use a product from an advance, from advancing eco agriculture called Ecent Shield. Um, occasionally, if my plants are having trouble or I see insect pressure coming in, um, in fact, I had some Colorado potato bugs starting to attack these a little bit early this season uh, after they ran out of potato plants to attack, and I got a little nervous, and so I started incorporating some Ecent Shield into my foliar feeds very small amount, literally a capful in a 15 gallon um, spray setup, and uh, just enough to basically protect the plants. Uh, it's basically a combination of like thyme and cinnamon oil and I don't know, a couple other essential oils, and I think it's on a on a neem carrier oil basically, and some sort of emulsifier so that it uh, mixes in with the water really easily. Um, anyway, that works really well for uh, repelling most of those type of insects uh, until you can get your plant health up. And then uh, I also find that because of the peppermint and thyme oil in it, I'm not sure exactly which essential oil it is, but there's, I think there's four or five in there all total. And one of those, or maybe multiple of those essential oils, I find when I do a foliar feed, those guys actually get burned and die back. They like turn brown and die, like it dehydrates them or something. Um, so that actually works really well against those guys. Um, I am planning on a foliar feed tonight, so had I not spotted those guys tonight, they'd be hanging from these branches tomorrow or the next day, dead anyway. Um, so really cool to be able to use plant essential oils as a way to uh, prevent, um, prevent insect attack until you can get plant health up. And also for some of those guys, like the tomato worms, I have, can't say I've seen that work on too many other insects in that way, uh, but it definitely does work on those guys. So if you had a mass infestation, that would be an easy way to do it. Um, my guess is even just peppermint oil at the right strength on, and with a little emulsifier in a foliar feed would probably do the same job. Um, I suspect it really is the peppermint oil that's doing that. Anyway, uh, I think I've rambled on and wasted enough of your time. <laughs> I thank you for watching the Pharmacy Seeds Network, if you're still watching. And I uh, hope you'll subscribe and like. And uh, hope we'll uh, 
interact some more in the future. If you have any comments or questions, please do so down below. Thanks for watching.